Well, I'm down here in what I affectionately call the dungeon, which is my unfinished basement. I was brought you along. I was going to show you what I got. Uh, if you read the title, then you already know what it is. So I'm just going to skip right into it and kind of show you um, why I got it, what I have got, and um, what you can expect from um, my uh, my take on this product from before, now, and going forward. So let me show you what I got. So this is it. This is the uh, medium sized Harvest Right freeze dryer. Um, it is uh, quite an expensive uh, tool to have. I do think of it as a tool, um, but it's it's something I've been thinking about for quite a long time. I just got it about, uh, this is middle of January, I got it uh, towards the end of October, so I have been working with it, I have been using it quite a bit, I even have a storage system over here you can see where I have labeled canisters that have different things that I have dehydrated, like for, you know, for example, this one's soup, over here I have meat. I have meals, I have potatoes, I have vegetables, I have just a whole assortment of things. Some of them are not labeled because they're empty. I have not you know, quite used it so much to fill all these things up, but I have used it quite a bit and I am quite impressed with the machine itself. Um, the, the pump that I have for it is an upgrade. It's the Premier Pump. Um, it costs extra for that. The uh, cart, I totally stole this idea from Retired at 40 channel and it works out great. It's a, a cart you get from Harbor Freight and you basically just kind of retrofit it uh, with some plywood on top, give it a little bit more stability and then you drill a hole in the side and that's where you can run your drainage tube which I have going into this uh, Dollar Tree bucket here and you'll be really surprised at how much how much water you, you remove from the food. It's just it's mind boggling how much water, even in something you think is very dry, already has a ton of moisture in it. Um, the bottom shelf I use for storage, I have my, uh, this is my uh, impulse sealer, which contains tray dividers. Um, the back, that's my oil filter, which I just changed uh, the oil in my pump uh, a couple days ago. I have a couple of extra fans down here that I have purchased off Amazon. They were like $5. I have one over here to blow into the intake side. And then I have one behind the actual pump itself to try to keep the pump as cool as possible. Now I do have the advantage with this being a basement, this stays very temperature regulated. Um, it only fluctuates maybe 10 degrees throughout the whole year and it generally stays within a, closer to five degrees. Only in extremes will it even maybe even get close to a 10 degree spread throughout the entire year. So being that it's downstairs, it stays cooler. So even in the winter now, outside right now in January, it's probably in the upper teens, I'm guessing, based on the forecast. And down here, um, even though it's, you know, it is, it is underground. So it stays, it's probably around 65 degrees down here. And that's with very minimal, um, there's only really two outlets as far as your heating and air HVAC system. There's only two little outlets for any kind of air conditioning or heating to be given down here because it does stay so, so stable of a temperature year round. Um, over here, I have just kind of, I just kind of set this up I like that this cart's on wheels because I will eventually move it. You know that if you've been watching my channel, my plans are to finish this basement at some time. That sometime has not come. But when I do, wheeling this thing around on, on this cart will be super easy. Uh, if you do d d buy the medium like I have here, um, lifting it up onto this cart about broke me. So I would get a friend or someone to do that. Um, it's, it was, it was not a smart idea for me to do it myself. It was far too heavy 
and awkward. It's just a it's just a large cube that you can't wrap your arms around. You can't really grab from this end at all because of the door. They tell you specifically not to do that. So it just really makes it odd and it's heavy. So um, make sure you have a friend. Uh, over here is kind of my, uh, this is my ceiling station. Over here, I'll get over here is my uh, uh, kind of part of my packaging station. But what, what it is is I have my impulse sealer here. I've got a uh, electrical strip that has my uh, little USB uh, fans the impulse sealer itself and then another core that goes to my uh, water purifier so that's kind of my station over here it's a working station so that's why it's a little messy i've got this little three tier uh cabinet of a sorts over here that holds my um, pints my quarts and my half gallon uh bags that i use for storage and then i keep i keep notes on everything i do um, that way I'll know how much water to reconstitute with uh, soup or what have you. Um, I also keep a record of how many batches I've done. That way, like I said, I just, I just changed the oil in the uh, oil pump. It's recommended with this specific pump to change it around, I think it said 25 to 30 batches. The, after my 21st batch, I was going to do it at 20 and, and I just got, I got sidetracked. So I just did it on my 21st batch, but I'm gonna try to do it about every 20 batches, a little earlier than, than what they say. It's super easy. It does take about, well, it's kind of an overnight type of project. You basically will take and uh, empty your oil, which is stupid simple. And then it goes into like a British type filter system and then just drains by gravity. And that's what takes so long. So I just set it up for overnight, came back the next day, Fill, refilled the same filtered oil back into it and I had to add a little bit of extra oil but at the same time I'm, I'm good now for another 20 batches so over here I just bought another little table and this is just for packaging so I can take my trays when I come out I put them over here I, I fill my um, my bags with the, the food and then I use the uh, these are oxygen absorbers over here of various sizes and then from there it just goes right over here the bags do to get uh, uh, impulse sealed which basically melts the mylar bags creating an airtight seal so that's pretty much the process and then of course from there it goes over to the storage rack so this is kind of my little station I've got I've got extra trays over here um, and this is what I use uh, to fill my my bags and my my food, and of course, utilizing this this piece of equipment here that I have thoroughly enjoyed. Now, let me get real with you here for just a second. So, so I did a lot of, of thinking before I purchased uh, this this harvest harvest right uh, freeze dryer because it is it is a very very expensive piece of equipment, and so. Um, I had to kind of sit down and put pen to paper and des decide if is this something that is worth such an incredibly large investment. These things are very expensive, or at least to me, they're very expensive. So what I did was I, um, I decided that for me, I do a fair amount of canning. If you've you know, watched my videos, you know I do a, a pretty fair amount of canning. And this pr will pretty much, this is better than canning in most regards, not in all, but in most regards, this is better than canning. Shelf life on this is generally around 25 years. Uh, whereas with canning, you know, uh, depending on who you ask, uh, I mean, I've eaten canned food that I have canned that was six, eight years old. It's fine. Um, it does look, sometimes lose some of its texture. With your uh, freeze drying methods, though, you're looking at usually usually somewhere around the 20 to 30 year mark. So um, it does not affect the texture in all cases, very few in fact. But um, what I have found is that it takes a it takes a lot longer than canning, and you of course use uh, quite a bit of electricity. Now what 
going forward with this um, with this freeze dryer, one thing I can promise you is is that I purchased this. I, I'm not like most of your uh, channels that you see on YouTube where it just shows up at their door and they tell you it's the best thing that that money can buy and how wonderful it is and it's perfect in every way. It's not. Um, I bought this with my money. I'm not being. Uh, no one's no one's given me free uh, freeze dryers or any of this equipment that I purchased. This is all on my on my dollar. So um, with that comes a real opinion of this and a true review of this. So um, I will get into that probably in and some more videos because I have used it extensively. And so this was just kind of a preview to kind of show you my setup and what it looks like when I am freeze drying. I am going to do another video talking about the cost breakdown of what I spent and what I have recouped. Is it something that you will break even on? Is this something that you can make money on? And that'll be covered in that video as well. There's also been um, some things that I have done that have turned out extremely well. There's been one thing so far that I've done that did not, and I'll cover kind of those things as well. But um, and I'll, I'll give you a full breakdown as to um, what what I've what so far what I've done, um, kind of the cost comparisons, and um, basically whether this may be something for you. Because uh, each of each of our needs are different, each of our socioeconomic uh, situations are different, and so I personally have uh, have been pleased with the product overall. I um, I think that it was a wise investment for me. It works out in my situation. Um, the 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 money factor was painful, but um, but I'm I'm seeing it for a very long term investment. So um, if you enjoyed this video, then give me a, a like and a subscribe and join a little family here um, of viewers and and subscribers. And I'd appreciate that. And also comment in the comments down below what all you would like to know if you've been looking at one of these freeze dryers. They have different sizes. They're at different, uh, the different sizes, of course, are different prices. Uh, it seems like the medium size is kind of the most popular. There is a small and a large. Um, the, the prices are expensive for all three, so it's not like the small is super cheap. And based on my use of it so far, I'm really glad that I got the medium. I don't think I'd be near as happy if I got the small. And I think that having the large would be overkill. And that's just for me. But uh, like I said, leave some comments below. Tell me what you would like to know about it. Um, tell, uh, you know, if you want to know some, if you want me to do some like recipes that I've been using, I have been doing a lot of soup because well, for, for multiple reasons, soups do extremely well. I'm dieting right now. It's part of my New Year's uh, resolution. And I love soup. And I found a bunch of ham on sale. So I bought four hams, so I, well, half hams. But still, that's over 40 pounds of ham that I've been processing and turning into soups and meals and such. But uh, Anyway, just if you if you if you have any desires as to future content with this machine, let me know um, and stay tuned for my other videos. I am still going to do videos on the cost breakdown, like I said, and some other kind of uh, kind of interesting information. If you are on the fence about buying one of these, or if you're just curious about them, they're they're real interesting machines, and. Uh, and so stay tuned for that. And so I, I thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you on the next adventure. Thanks.